How are you guys doing? Hi, we're good. good man. How are you? We're doing excellent. Um, uh, you guys are in a hotel. I'm, I wasn't expecting you guys to actually be together. Oh, I know. I we're fully tested. We are. We're tested, and we've done all the things. Mm -hmm. uh, it must be nice to see other people. Anyway, I'm. I'm you it know. is. Although I have to say, I've been, I was in Australia for many months during COVID, so I was spoiled. It was fully open until it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is clearly the case with this. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I was going to say, um, because I have extra time with you guys, I like throwing some curveballs at the beginning. Um, for each of you, these I swear these are painless. Um, what TV series would you love to guest star on? <gasps> um, oh, Westworld. Is it current? Does it have to be running? No, you can go vintage if you want. I, I want to pop up in, in The Sopranos. No, oh. <laughs> The Wire, The Wire. They're uh, both very good choices. Um, what movie or movies do you think you've seen the most? The Greatest Maybe. Showman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. I'm are not. You, if I'm just gonna be are honest, you I'm being serious. I love that movie so much. I cry at the end every time. I love That's it to hilarious. pieces. Yeah. But the, let me give you a different answer. That's Probably Hitchcock's so Rope. No. Uh, I'm not over that. <laughs> I love the great. Don't show. try to sound cool now by saying I Hitchcock. Okay? I know, I know. Just, just, just own just your saying, answer. I'm being, I'm owning it. I love um, the greatest show. That's probably embarrassing. Hugh Jackman's just still a dream boat. He is a dream. He is. Yeah. 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 Um, gosh, this is really throwing me for one. I'm sorry. I'm taking more time. <laughs> um, five minutes. Okay. Uh, what about, what about, what about. I can talk about the greatest show for a bit. Keep going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't think about of it one is... movie right now. This is insane. Um, okay. It's everything you in ever the mood want. for it's love. Everything you ever need. Yeah. in the mood for love oh that's quite good yes yeah um i'm i'm very curious if ben can actually sing any of the greatest showmen is that not happening I'm, it's not I'm happening not but i can i can i can you know in my shower yeah right got word it for, word for word yeah no i mean listen there's there is some very very uh catchy songs in that movie i'm being sincere it's not about the catchy songs it's not yeah. about the catchy songs man it's about I, the fact that he goes you know he thinks I'm, I'm not going to carry on with this. <laughs> <laughs> you are oh my god! He thinks he needs. He thinks he needs the love of the world. Wow. Actually, he just needs the love of a few good people. And I think that's a very, a very uh, wonderful. I, I literally, and this is not a joke. I, I literally interviewed Hugh last week for a very long time. I did not bring up Greatest Showman, but I think listen, he's what we call a talented actor. Very yes, talented. and probably the nicest human on the planet. Maybe I literally. Uh, uh, him and Keanu are both, but we're getting into a sidebar. Oh. Let's mm. let's Sorry, jumping yes. into why I get to talk to you guys today. Um, what was it about this? I see a lot of movies, and this is a movie that has a few twists and turns that I was not expecting. I would imagine for both of you reading the script, you must have been like, "Wait, what?" As you're flipping the pages, can you sort of talk about that? I think that's why we chose to do it. It was as we read a lot of scripts and it was a genre that I haven't read a lot of. It's definitely having a little, oh my God, I did not recognize you. I was say hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Oh my God. I, hey. He was running towards me. Oh, I, I, I can tell that was, oh. I can tell that was justice. Yeah. It was indeed. Yeah. Oh, oh. anyway. Um, what's, what are you talking about? Do you want about? me to carry on? What, Please. Wait. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I think we were just both surprised by like, the twists and turns in the script and we read so many scripts as actors you know so i'm sure lots of people doing this business and it just completely blew us away and we were just completely blindsided and um mm. i think we both thought it was just something we really wanted to be a part of i mean i i get the feeling you're a cinephile did you see the twists and turns coming i did not uh i was yeah i was i was like what i think it's like an hour into the movie and i'm like wait what and then yeah. as things keep going i'm like I, I i actually my girlfriend could hear me in the other room when i said what like i had that kind of reaction because i was watching it on you know my computer i just oh. i was very surprised is what i will great. say great mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. that's have you guys happy yo no, i mean by the way if you yeah i don't want to get into spoilers but it's so I am hard curious, not to yeah ben i am curious though so was it in the script that you were going to basically be shirtless this entire film or was it when you got to set that you found out that you're just not going to be wearing a shirt uh, we talked well, about actually, this so much. actually, like, 
he was supposed to wear a shirt the entire time, but I insisted I'm only doing the film <laughs> if I'm naked for 95%. No, I, no, I think it was, uh, it was in the script. Yeah, it was in the script. Yeah, there was, it, the, it was important that Seb seemed like um, something which Justice, his character Thomas wasn't. Mm. The, the Thomas would have that kind of jealousy perhaps, or not necessarily jealousy, but just, just an understanding that this guy works out and, and you know, this guy is, you know, at least, I'm not, I suppose we're talking about myself, you know, but he, that he's, you know, he's um, desirable in, in some kind of way, which maybe Thomas isn't. Uh, and that's also to do with, with character and attitude as yeah. well. Seb's very kind of, he's kind of very alpha, you know, he's very alpha male, very kind of um, uh, demanding, but in a very kind of dominating way, which, you know, they just, they just polar opposites. So it was the contrast there. No, a hundred percent. But yeah, yeah. One of the other things that's interesting is that there's scenes where you're being obviously photographed from essentially across the street, which is, so there's no cameras where you guys are, which allows you, I would imagine, a lot of flexibility in how you're going to move about the scene because you don't really, it's, it's it, you know, there's, you don't have to, not the continuity, if you will, but can you sort of talk about filming those scenes where you're being photographed from across the street and what that is sort of, maybe that's more liberating for allowing you the freedom to do things. Exactly. We've been talking about how it felt very unique to film in that way, uh, our experience as actors. And I found it liberating. I think you found it more annoying than I did, but <laughs> I found it very liberating um, just because the camera was far away enough that I felt a little more free with not hitting certain marks. Um, but we did have anti-marks where you couldn't stand in certain positions because you you'll be behind some window pane or something so we had to avoid certain marks marks but i don't know i felt i liked it it was like putting on a play tash liked it i i, <laughs> I didn't love it i think i found it i think the camera adds a certain level of energy and i feel like yeah. you know it, but there's, there's both sides of the argument and sometimes i did feel that way and then there was other times i just felt like when the camera's not there you know when, when, when it's when you're there and the camera's in the room and it's rolling and it's about to go you can almost feel like well, I can, you know, feel myself yeah. filling up, ready to emote and go and do that. And there's that energy and it's alive. And I felt, I found it quite hard to generate that knowing it was all the way across the other side of the world. And we were being directed through a, um, you know, tannoy system, but mm -hmm. not Mike's fault. Mike would, Michael Mohan, that is, you know, and he would come around and, and give us notes all the time. I yeah. mean, that guy covered more steps than anyone he on that film running, set, from running set between set. two apartments. Yeah. Um, can't speak highly enough of Mike, but um, no, he's the best. yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, so you guys, you know, this is an erotic thriller, and it's it's interesting because for me, Hollywood will let you basically do horrible things to people, violence-wise, and the MPAA is totally cool with it. But if you show a little bit of sex, or basically, there seems to be a, a roadblock up. If I don't know, there seems to be like Hollywood's gotten more prude as the decades have gone on. Can you sort of talk about, or if you don't mind talking about the fact that? Um, I guess just you guys made it if any aspect of what I just talked about. I didn't get, ask a good question at all. I know, I know, I know what you mean. I, 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 no, it was a good, very good question. I think, mean, I don't know. I, just, I to be honest, I'm going to be honest, I haven't really thought about it that much until today. Why haven't we had that kind of 90s psychosexual thriller um, uh, for about what feels like 10 years? I don't know. Mm. Maybe longer. I forget how old I am. But um, I, I, part of me thinks when I look back at those, at the, a lot of those movies, they're very much, they're great movies, but they're of their time. And um, and often they, like in Fatal Attraction is the one I think of, you know, yeah. Glenn Close's character is ostensibly just kind of crazy, you know, and I feel it doesn't really explore her exactly why she is this person that's come into this, uh, into this man's life. And it feels like it's very much through the, um, through a man's lens, you know? So I think um, maybe it's the period of time has been necessary to kind of maybe evolve that genre and make it something, I mean, I love that movie, by the way, but it's just of its time, you know, but evolve that genre and make it more current to today and kind of explore every character within the script. And also in this one, we have a female protagonist, which I think is a flip on the genre as well. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why there is a blind eye for violence um, when it comes to ratings and censorship. It does feel like there is some sort of imbalance with that. Um, agreed. I don't know. Yeah, it's just something I, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah. uh, I love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of a film. For each of you, what do you think maybe would surprise people to learn about the making of this movie? 
but it was made in uh, entirely in a studio, more or less. There were some exteriors, yeah. but it was the apartments were actually built inside a studio. So yeah. what was amazing for us as, as actors was the fact that it felt like we had our own little apartments inside it the really studio. It really did. It really and did. So all the shots, you know, shot from across the way, looking in on our lives, are, that's really the way it was happening, essentially. Maybe the walls are cardboard or uh, instead of stone, you know, but... Um, it was very real. And Canadian very, winter was just freezing outside. Mm. So we had this little box every day that we'd just come to work and be in our little Lego set, little life. <laughs> On that note, I got to go. I'm just going to say congrats on the movie. And I definitely don't think people are going to see the third act coming. Thank you. Thank you.